ability to overclock a laptop is surprisingly becoming more and more common, but just how far can you push them? After all, unlike overclocking a traditional PC, we don't have access to AIOs, a million different fans, or even the space for heat to dissipate. Instead, in a laptop, we have everything crammed inside of this tiny form factor with a couple fans that do the cooling. So today, we're gonna see just how much more gaming performance we can unlock by overclocking a laptop with its built-in tools. And to do that, we're going to be using MSI's latest gaming laptop, the Raider 18 HX AI. Out of the box with no settings adjusted, we have a Cinebench CPU multi-core score of 2111 and a GPU Time Spy benchmark of 19487. Now that we have some baseline benchmarks, it's time for some overclocking. But before I go and tinker with all the settings myself, let's go ahead and see how much performance we can unlock with MSI's AI robot chatbot thing. This is basically a way for us to communicate with the laptop in plain English and have it change certain settings. Let's, let's, let's start off with a softball. What are the specs of this laptop? Intel Core Ultra 9 285HX, literally doesn't get any better than that. 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM plus a four terabyte PCIe Gen 5 SSD. Up to an RTX 5090, although this one has a 5080 inside of it. It's also rocking a 120 hertz 4K mini LED display as well in a, la in a laptop. Gaming laptops are getting so insane. These specs are nuts. Now let's see if this can further optimize for performance. Please optimize this laptop for the highest CPU and GPU performance. Oh, and it says I can adjust your system settings to prioritize performance. Would you like to proceed? Yes. I can spell. Yes. Perfect. I'm now setting your system to performance mode for maximum speed and efficiency. Oh, did it already do it? I suppose there should be a way for me to tell. Let me just go. Oh, oh it did actually switch over to extreme performance in the MSI center. So like, even if you didn't know that this existed, it did make the change. Although it would have been nice if it like gave some sort of indication that it made the change. Let's just, let's just ask one more time if there's anything else it can do. Oh, it can also optimize memory and cooling settings. Yeah, do that too. Great, I'm now freeing up unused memory to improve performance and loading the optimal fan speed. Is this what PC troubleshooting in the future is gonna look like? Just ch talking with the laptop itself in plain English? That would be kind of cool. Again, I don't really know exactly how to check to see if it did free up memory or change the fan speeds, but I think we'll trust it. With the robot changing those settings, let's go ahead and run a second benchmark. Let's actually specifically look at the GPU since this is a gaming laptop and that'll have more of an impact. 21,462, that's what? That's a 10% that's a increase from like the base state of this laptop. Let's tell the robot that it did a good job. Thanks. So now we're gonna do away with the with the robo AI optimization, and we're, we're gonna we're gonna take overclocking into our own hands. And this is what I think is just kind of bonkers with these new gaming laptops. They have built-in overclocking capabilities. Previously, you'd have to go into BIOS and change a bunch of settings there, or get third-party programs. Now, inside of the MSI Center, which comes preloaded on the computer, if you go under Extreme Performance, click this little settings icon. Boom, we can actually adjust the core clock offset for the GPU. So this is where we're gonna see just how far we can push this. Now, like I said earlier in the video, we don't have access to desktop level cooling, but inside of this laptop in particular, MSI has included two fans and seven heat pipes, including one that actually is specifically made to, to attach to the SSD. But since we know we are going to be overclocking, let's go ahead and adjust the fan curves first. You can see here, we do have pretty minute control of how fast the fan should be spinning based on certain temperatures. But for the sake of pushing this, as far as it can go, let's just set both fans to run at 150% speed all the time. Ideally, that'll keep the computer as cold as possible for as long as possible. And we should hear them spin up right now. Yep, okay, they're spinning. Oh yeah, the GPU is definitely coming down. <laughs> These fans are blasted. That's exactly what we want though, the coldest environment as possible. <laughs> 37 degrees. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get started by setting this to plus 100 megahertz frequency. And if we save that, Oh, I don't, you don't even have to restart it. So technically our laptop is overclocked right now, but let's go ahead and jump into the benchmark to see what it results in with that extra clock speed. All right, moment of truth. Did our overclocking actually result in increased performance? Show me what you got, Raider 18. 22,036, we broke the 22K mark. Wait, that, that also beats the world's best Time Spy recorded score with a 5080 laptop GPU and an Intel Core Ultra 9 285HX. And the laptop seems stable. I mean, that's one of the concerns with overclocking is that you push it to the point where it becomes unstable and starts crashing all the time. And you know what? We can push this even further. Let's go ahead and push this to a plus 200 megahertz core clock offset. Let's run this benchmark one more time. 
22,110. Okay, so that is an improvement, albeit a marginal one. So it looks like we might be getting diminishing returns with these overclocks, but this is just extra performance for free. Although I guess it is using more power probably. And with that, we just set a new world best with this overclock. There's also a way to increase the VRAM clock offset. So should we just max that out as well? Yeah, let's just, let's just max it out and see what happens. Well, let's go ahead and run the test one final, final time to see what we can produce. Oh, we did actually improve the score again, but by seven points. So very marginal, but still, hey, good enough to beat our previous world best with this configuration. <laughs> All right, let me turn down these fans. <laughs> That's a 13 and a half percentage increase of performance from our base state to our maxed overclock state. Meaning that's just free performance, more frames, smoother gameplay. And anecdotally, gaming on this laptop does feel incredibly smooth. Sometimes I forgot I was even using a laptop because the experience was just so solid. I think there's two main reasons why we're seeing more of this overclocking ability with these types of gaming laptops. The first is like the power modes. MSI, for example, deploys what they're calling Overboost Ultra, which essentially allows more power to be delivered to the CPU and the GPU, up to 260 watts. I believe it does this by drawing from the battery and the wall outlet at the same time for maximum draw. And with all that power, performance will increase. But now the second factor at play here is the cooling, because with all that extra power comes extra heat. And if you can't find a way to get rid of that heat, well, you're gonna thermal throttle, meaning your components might actually reduce their clock speeds in order to not produce as much heat. And so on the cooling side for this Raider 18, MSI has deployed their Cooler Boost 5, with two fans and seven heat pipes, with that extra heat pipe specifically for the SSD. Which might sound a little silly on paper, but these newer generations of SSDs are, are so fast that they're just producing more and more heat. And the cooler you can keep those, the better they'll perform as well. So honestly, that is pretty cool. Ah, pun intended. <laughs> they actually show a chart here that without that cooling pipe installed, the read speed of that Gen 5 SSD that's installed in here actually fluctuates quite a bit more and has way lower read speeds overall. But when it's cooled properly, it's way more stable. Going back to this AI robot chatbot thing that we were dealing with a little earlier, another thing that's neat about these laptops is that these small language models can run locally right on this device, meaning that everything's private. It's just running on your machine, likely due to all of the tops in the RTX 50 series cards, but also for the dedicated MPU. And I don't know about you, but I personally feel way more comfortable using AI when I know that it's local and not connecting to someone else's computer in the cloud. And actually, let's test that. Let's turn off our Wi-Fi to see if we can still chat with our computer. Enable the AI engine. Oops, didn't spell that right. Let's see if it still figures it out. Oh yeah, okay, it enables AI Engine. And as you can see, it actually just changed that setting right in front of me. MSI's AI Engine also just optimizes for AI tasks in particular. So, you know, nice to have in case you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff. And, and again, with no Wi-Fi, we can just chat with this AI robot. <laughs> I'm just so curious what else this can actually do. My laptop is running hot. Oh, so instead of me just changing all the fan speeds, we could have just asked the AI to do it for us. All right, see, I like that kind of feedback where I know immediately that it actually enacted the changes. I can hear the changes this time. Okay, turn it off now. I haven't seen AI deployed this way for computers, but the ability to just chat in plain English and, and say what I want to achieve does seem to lower the barrier of entry when it comes to uh, getting the most out of your computer or laptop. Because you might not want to tinker with all of these settings, but if you just say, hey, I, I, I want to get more frames per second, the fact that this language model knows what that means and, and how to apply that. That's kind of cool. It still feels crazy to me that we can get such crazy specs crammed into a laptop form factor. This is a 4K 120 hertz gaming experience just bundled in something you can carry around with you wherever you go. Granted, this thing is a bit beefier than what I would like typically want to carry around to class every day, for example. But let's take a look at the design real quick. Overall, the gaming aesthetic is a bit subtle, although you can see some of these red accents hidden throughout the, uh, the black chassis. Here up underneath the screen, on the sides, by the vents, and MSI uses Mystic Light to sort of tie in all of the various RGB elements. For example, the keyboard lights up, even the WASD keys are transparent. There's a light bar tucked away here on the front of the laptop and on the back of the laptop. You also have the ability to modify the color of the MSI logo. Technically, there is one additional LED, but it's not really connected to everything else because it's just an LED for the battery indicator between these two lightning bolt ports. And since we're talking about ports, we have a USB here and a dedicated headphone jack. That's always nice. On the left side, we have two more USBs plus a full-size SD card Reader. And finally, over in the back, we have a full-size Ethernet port, an HDMI, and finally, the charging port. This thing is pretty impressive, so I will leave some information about the Raider 18 down in the description below. But I know MSI also releases like a ton of different types of, of laptops, from gaming to productivity and everything in between.
between. So if you're trying to figure out which MSI laptop is best for you, well, I'll also leave a link down to this video in the description as well, which does highlight the main features of all of their current lineup. They kind of have this like Norse dragon theme going on with all of them. So here you can see them talk a little bit about the Titan. If we skip ahead a bit, we can see them talking about the Raider 18. Essentially, it consolidates all of their different marketing material for each of these individual laptop releases all in one single video. Covers everything from the Venture Pro series laptops to the Vector, Titan, Raider, and the Stealth series as well. So again, I'll leave a link to this down below as well. But with that, I wanna give a huge shout out to MSI for sponsoring this video. I still find it so amazing they can make gaming laptops this powerful and then can allow you to overclock them to be even more powerful. So with that, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Aw, yeah.